Hi, we're now going to talk about a really important topic, which is about making things more green with relation to IT. So green IT as a phrase is linked to another phrase, another term, which is the carbon footprint. So an organization's carbon footprint is said to be the total amount of emissions they have caused. So by emissions, we mean harmful gases released into the atmosphere, most notably CO2. So every time you burn something like petrol, it releases lots of CO2, which is bad for the environment. It causes the greenhouse effect. It causes global warming. So not good, us churning out loads of harmful emissions. And green IT is meant to be trying to reduce the carbon footprint, so to try and make it so the environment is less affected by our actions. Because having your carbon footprint is caused by both direct and indirect actions. Right, some things we do which directly cause emissions to get released. So for instance, burning things like paperwork to destroy it directly causes CO2 to get released into the atmosphere. But I would say most of our carbon footprint comes from indirect actions. So for example, you buying a brand new computer system doesn't seem like you're directly, well, you're not, you're not directly releasing CO2, but by it being made in a huge factory with loads of electricity that causes potentially CO2 to get released. For shipping, usually this is usually our devices are made long way away and we get shipped across in huge cargo ships which burn a lot of diesel. And also just generally our computers being on, assuming our electricity isn't coming from renewable sources, that also produces emissions into the environment. So all of us have got a carbon footprint. Every organization has a carbon footprint and the computing aspect of it probably is, is a fair percentage. So trying to reduce this down is quite important. Now because the government also think this is important, because they want to reduce climate change and hopefully become more sustainable, they have certain nationwide and also global strategies which are being followed. By the way, so climate change is just where over time the environment is getting changed because of our actions, either getting warmer, getting colder, more extreme weather events. And sustainability is about making use of what we have and not wasting things and ensuring that over time we're not running out of important materials. So for instance, if we're cutting down more forests faster than we are growing new trees, well, that's not sustainable. If we are burning loads of fossil fuels, well, that's not sustainable because they're going to quickly run out. So we are trying to become more sustainable over time. And the United Nations have been pushing quite hard for this recently. Every year, they have a climate change conference where lots of leaders meet in different countries and they set targets for individual countries related to emissions. So there are certain goals, which often my countries argue about, to try and cut down on emissions and so on. The UN also, as a global organization, do also organize finance to support the developing countries. So maybe less wealthy countries might find it harder to pay for expensive anti-climate change devices. And so the UN are trying to give money to those to help with that as well. But, you know, it's always quite controversial because a lot of people don't always feel like they're doing enough or certain countries maybe are not putting their weight when it comes to this. Within the UK, the UK government have got a strategy which they're running until 2050. So it's a long-term strategy. It's called the net zero strategy. And the whole goal by 2050 is to take in as much greenhouse gas from the environment as we as a country add to it. So in other words, for every emissions we release, we take in the same amount from the environment. So the overall, there isn't an impact at all. So that's a long way away from us being close to that, but the government are aiming for 2050. And they've set out some things they want us to do, but again, it's quite controversial because maybe they're not being as specific as they should be. They are investing in certain green technologies, thinking about things like solar panels and carbon capture, capture technologies. But again, a lot of people feel like the government are not necessarily doing enough to get to this point. Individual organisations can't control what the government do, of course, but they can control what they do. And so individual organisations might want to reduce their carbon footprint by doing 
lots of specific initiatives or ideas and you can probably come up with some as well but to give you some things you could talk about well organizations can make sure their old computers they're not just chucked and thrown in landfill they should be recycled so they can be reused and not wasted they can also set policies in the organization to power off devices automatically so that overnight all the lights aren't left on all the computers aren't left on maybe they set their computers to turn off after 30 minutes of not being used stuff like that will save electricity they also can use electronic copies instead of printing loads of things every time you print the ink is not great environmentally it costs money to buy obviously but it's also not a good set of chemicals printing out loads of things is a waste of paper waste of ink better potentially to use electronic copies so you just share your work instead of printing loads and loads of things and another quick thing which IT companies could do is instead of buying brand new computers every every couple of years they might want to buy effectively recycled computers which are called refurbished computers where somebody has taken in an old computer made it work made it better and so it can be reused again that's better than just dumping stuff in landfill which will never get used again so there is a, a few small things which a company could do I'm sure you can think of some more as well now in terms of why an organization might do this well over time it might well cut down on energy costs if you're able to not use as much electricity if you're able to not have to um, have so much running at once this could cut down on your bills and also because customers care more and more about the environment because politicians care more and more about the environment you being a environmentally friendly company could well improve your brand image leading to more customers down the line and also if you're able to cut down on certain costs like brand new computers like printing well this means you're not paying for these things unnecessarily and finally you'd hope that the bosses in charge of companies care about it themselves and so there is a certain moral purpose behind it the idea that it's our one planet and we've got to look after it and I think companies with a strong moral purpose are often quite popular to work for employees really buy into it it helps with motivation so actually there are loads of good reasons for being environmentally friendly not only just looking after the environment